Hello, I'm Asif Farouk of Finextra and I'm here today with Stephen Gilderdale and Astrid Torsen at Cyboss 2014 in Boston and we're going to be talking about big data. Thank you both for joining me firstly. Um, let's start with you Stephen. Um, big data is something that seems to be a real big topic at this year's Cyboss. Why is that exactly? Well, I think there are many drivers for, uh, for big data being a topic here at Cyboss this week. Um, firstly, you have the drive to manage cost and risk. And for that, it's important to have the right information at your fingertips. I think secondly, on the value side, um, there is a real drive to, to manage business strategy and get deeper customer insights. And it's no longer a case of having a competitive advantage by having the right data um, in your systems. It's actually a license to operate. So basically, if you do not have the right information to drive your business strategy, to basically deepen your insight with your customers, then you, you really are at a disadvantage. I think the third point is around regulatory demand for reporting. And I mean, this has been a theme at Cybos for several years now, um, but there is clearly a burden on financial institutions to, to provide timely and transparent data to, to regulators for various uh, different regulations. And big data can help do that. Um, it means pulling information from various sources. Um, it means doing that in a timely, timely manner. And of course, it means that that information must, absolutely must be accurate. Are there any other challenges that you see in your business? Well, I, I think there are many challenges at averaging big data. And um, certainly uh, one that financial institutions um, are, are faced with is, is legacy. Legacy both in their, in their systems um, in that uh, they have acquired different systems through, uh, through acquisitions, through growth, that they have developed systems in silos, um, but also the, the privacy terms that this, this data has been acquired uh, through. So basically where there has been um, uh, no foresight to bring in the information together to use it in a certain way, the data privacy terms can, can restrict what you can actually do. Um, I think there's also a um, a challenge around talent, around finding the, the infamous data scientists who can, who can bring together the skills of um, a statistician, uh, somebody who can use the technology um, to, 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 uh, to extract the value from the data, but also understands the, uh, the drivers in the business, business strategy, um, or what is trying to be achieved through deeper customer insight, whatever it may be. So I, I think there's several challenges which uh, um, which exist, and I would maybe add just as a final point that whilst regulation can be a reason to, to leverage big data, um, it can also be a constraint as well. Um, the location that the data um, is stored in um, can um, have a jurisdiction, which means that uh, data sovereignty issues come in play. So it can be very difficult to bring the data together that you need to get the insight that you're looking for. Okay, um, so Astrid, I'll move to you. I wasn't that aware of what Swift is doing in big data and what products they have. So what exactly is it for the people who don't know, what is Swift doing? Okay, so um, as Steve mentioned, having access to data is becoming a license to operate. So what we have at Swift is that we have all the messaging flows of the whole community. And there's been a strong demand for a couple of years already on helping them to really use this data. So that's how we have set up some a portfolio of products, of business intelligence products. One of the challenges we are resolving is that we can access the data for one customer for all his locations. So we are able to consolidate all the information. I think that due to all the different mergers and acquisitions, etc., institutions are facing these legacy systems and on their premises they have difficulties to really get this holistic picture. We at SWIFT we can offer that. So that's really a key item that the institutions are looking for. Another thing is that we are developing of business intelligence solutions really based on what are the standardized flows that exist. And so we are building really true business insights through the areas where we have a strong presence and where we can have really a meaningful impact for the customers, being for them to look at their own data or being able to benchmark the same against the competition, against the total markets. And that gives them a competitive uh, advantage. Okay. Are there any trends or anything you're noticing that your customers are asking for in particular? Is there anything like that? What we see is that our customers are always asking for more <laughs> every day. 
So uh, we really focus on providing them some true business insights. So what we look at is having a set of products, a portfolio, that's really meeting the needs of our bigger customers and our smaller customers. So that we have developed. But what we want as well is to further build intimacy with each customer. And so we are developing our, our BI services where we offer some tailored analytics, but moreover, what Steve was mentioning, really some true intelligence and expertise on how to look at the data and how to really uh, interpret it and use it in the right way to drive some decisions and actions. And so we have a, really a team of experts in the different areas where we, we provide BI, so in correspondent banking, in trade finance, in securities. And these different experts are really, uh, I would say, partners of the financial institutions. We don't want to be seen as a service provider. We want to be seen as a partner where we both work together for the same objective. It's really to support them to achieve uh, really their goals and their strategic focus. Okay. Um, final question. Because big data is so big uh, of a topic this year, Next year, 2015, what, is, uh, what role is big data going to play? And I'll, I'll ask that to uh, Steve. Well, I think, um, I mean, big data has been a topic for a few years now. Um, and I don't think it's going to go away. I think the fact that the amounts of data that are being analyzed, the, the variety, um, the, the, um, the fact that it will be more and more unstructured, this will continue. And I think that, I mean, one challenge that maybe I didn't mention before um, which will also continue into the future is technology. So where there will be new solutions to keep the data where it is and, and to analyze these various pockets of information together at a central place. I, I think this will get more advanced, get more mainstream, and this will enable new insights and new ways of analyzing the data which haven't been, uh, haven't been possible up to date. One further area that I think will, uh, will evolve is the um, uh, is predictive uh, analytics. So this is something which is, um, uh, which is uh, maturing, um, which is used in, in certain niches today. I think it will become more mainstream. Um, but this will very much be linked to the, uh, the availability of, of talented people, people with the right skills and capabilities to be able to do this advanced type of, uh, type of analysis.